So, welcome to this lecture on advanced digital system design in the course uh, digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs. In the last lecture we have looked at the VHDL coding of uh, the finite state machine or controller. Uh, basically we have uh, looked at the various ways you can code it, uh, code the FSM and we have taken shown some simple example. Uh, to illustrate that uh, coding styles. There are various ways and some schemes of certain uh, quirks or uh, trouble it brings like synchronous reset. Uh, we have um, handled that uh, situation and today we will continue with the, uh, the issues with the finite state machine. But before that we will have a quick run through the last lecture slide. Uh, to be in sync because that may be useful uh, in this even in this lecture. So, let us turn to the slide uh, of the, the last uh, lecture. Uh, so, here uh, we have uh, looked at the, the block diagram of the state machine uh, a three block diagram we have first looked at this and we said these inputs clock reset and output definitely clock and reset normally come from outside. So, they can be ports uh, sometime if it is internal it can be signal, but input and output if you are testing it stand alone then it is port. But many a times when you are integrating with uh, the data path it could be ports or signal maybe some input is coming from uh, outside. So, that could be port and very important thing though we said that you can adopt various uh, ways of coding the finite state machine you have to choose the style as prescribed by the uh, specified by the synthesis tool. The basic idea is that synthesis tool should be able to infer that this constitute uh, an, a, a finite state machine. So, that the FSM specific optimization uh, the, the problem solving can be done on this structure. Otherwise, uh, if you just code uh, this as a logic and this as flip flop and this as logic uh, then uh, the implementation would be correct it will work perfectly. But uh, the synthesis tool will not be able to do any FSM uh, optimization or any issue it can normally solve it cannot be done. Uh, the example is that we have talked about the state diagram optimization unless uh, the tool um, infer that it is a finite state machine. Uh, the state diagram optimization cannot be done there will be redundant states unnecessarily wasting uh, area in the next side logic and output logic and so on. Okay. And uh, we have looked at the various ways and here in this three block we could have this written in a process, this in a process. This can be written in a process if the number of outputs are greater than the number of states. It can be a concurrent statement if number of outputs are much less compared to the, uh, the number of uh, states because then there are only two outputs you need only uh, two concurrent statement. But suppose there are seven states uh, you, you, you may end up writing a case with uh, seven men wherein only two outputs are specified not very kind of concise coding though the, uh, the hardware wise it makes no different. Uh, but it is a long code that is why we I said you can write concurrent statement. Uh, we also said that you know you can combine these two in a single process because the VHDL in VHDL you can specify a set of registers with the preceding logic in a single process. So, that can be done in that case you have a process for this two blocks together and with a process or a concurrent statement set of concurrent statements for output logic. And you can include the asynchronous reset here along with the flip flop if it is synchronous reset it is included here. And when you combine as I said when you combine both together there is an issue we have, dis we have discussed that I will just uh, throw light on it. And we also said normally when you code the next state logic. Uh, we write a process with the present state as input and uh, in the sensitivity list and all the inputs because these two are the input to the block. And we say 
case present state is and for each state we specify the transition using if ok. Um, similarly for the, the more kind of output you can say case present state is or with select whichever uh, one you use. Um, again you can use if for the melee output under the case and so on. And this is a process where use um, the if uh, statement with the reset and clock event or rising edge clock uh, for the flip flops ok. Um, the, the next uh, possibility is that we come to a two block uh, view where the next state logic and output logic is combined into um, a single block where the outputs are next state logic and the outputs. So now uh, you can write this in a single uh, process and a flip flop in a process and flip flop is as usual. But here again you do a case present state for each choice you specify the output if it is more output straight away and mille then you can write an if uh, then kind of structure and for the transition under each state uh, for each when uh, statement of the case you can specify the transition various transition using the if. So one advantage of uh, writing this way is that when you have a state diagram uh, like quickly looking at the state diagram you can complete the whole logic in one shot ok. So that is one advantage of um, writing it together but if you write as in early then uh, when you write the next state logic coding you have to keep the state diagram run from top to bottom then again come back you know write the output logic and top to bottom you write and when you debug if something goes wrong uh, depending on where the trouble is you have to, to go through both code ok. I mean these things are uh, come with experience and uh, for some it occurs uh, naturally those who are very uh, systematic um, uh, sometime by their habit they stumble upon these kind of um, advantages. But then uh, it all shows that uh, you need some kind of planning experience um, because even writing the code though they are equal and some style of coding is helpful in a quick um, kind of um, design debug and things like that that you should keep in mind. And we have looked at um, the problem of a sequence detector mainly as an exercise uh, not as a serious kind of design. I do not think uh, you need to use an FSM based sequence detection in communication ok. Uh, you can do better than that you can do much simpler schemes uh, than uh, doing this and we said it is an overlapping detector that means uh, like in the case of 101 you know you have a 0 1 here uh, then the 3 4 5 also form a detected sequence detection and, and we have seen the uh, kind of the state diagram and we have seen the coding. Uh, the main thing is that the, the library entity and uh, the most tool allows you to define an enumerated kind of um, data type for this and define the present state and next state as that type. Then you write a process for next state logic with the present state and inputs. In this case only one input is there, uh, inputs in the sensitivity list. Then you go state by state, case present state is when a, then you uh, use if on that to, to specify the transition. Important thing is to uh, do all the transition if else everything, do not don't, don't think that because you are in state A you do not need to say else next state A that will cause implied light. So you continue through and uh, the flip flop is uh, you know like a asynchronous reset you know how to write that if reset then present state is starting state or upon the clock present state get next state. And when you write uh, uh, the, the output as a concurrent statement you, you can use when else or with select. If it is with select you say with present state select uh, or with when else you can write like that. And we have seen uh, the next state logic and output logic together only difference is that in the case of each choice of this present state 
you specify the transition as well as the output okay and when it is more there is no condition on it when it is melee you can write a, a simple logical condition here if it is simple case or you can use if or case or whatever is is a, um, is a appropriate thing to use at that point in time. Uh, the flip flop is same then we have seen a mille kind of machine for the same problem and uh, we have combined uh, the next state logic and output logic and you can see that uh, the detect here is written as a mille type detect gets d in that means if d in is 1 detect is 1 else detect is uh, 0 and many a times when you can write it in a very straightforward uh, kind of logic it is better to write like that. Sometime uh, what happens is that people get used to this syntax and even for simple things like uh, this one tend to write uh, the if saying that if d in is 1 then detect is 1 else detect is 0 and all that and forget all about what could be the hardware you know it is it is nothing you know it detected here it is a d code of c uh, which is in our case maybe q1 bar q0. So in this case um, in the Millet machine we are combining the next state logic and output logic in a process and um, the code is similar only thing is that we have this um, detect uh, which is uh, written as a part of um, uh, I mean detect as a as a function of d in. So when you uh, decode uh, it is like uh, you know the state c and d in is the detect. So it is q1 bar q0 and d in okay to uh, and it is better you remember uh, these basics always. Uh, what happens is that when you one danger with the, the, the more and more sophisticated tools and these kind of language is that you tend to you tend to forget or tend not associate the hardware with it and people like I have seen uh, students writing uh, this symbol thing as if d in is 1 then detect is 1 else detect is 0 and so on and forget what is the, what is the hardware is not a good thing. I mean I have asked uh, some students what is what is that hardware what, what does it uh, you know what does the synthesis tool generate if you write a st statement like that then they are sometime at loss even with some very trivial silly stuff. So wherever you can bring clarity by making things simple you should make it simple then use all the if case and you know nest it and things like that you know. Though we are learning about it uh, wherever uh, things can be made simple elegant uh, you should do it and um, if the same thing uh, is written as a concurrent statement uh, instead of this if you are writing it outside here we are combining both next state logic and output logic together. But if it is outside then you can write like this detect is 1 when present state equal to c and d in equal to 1 else 0 okay. So you can write like that and uh, here to write with select is difficult because you have two inputs um, if you are kind of adam adamant then you can do that what you can do is that you have to kind of group. Uh, present state and the d in together into a temporary signal then you say with that signal select and uh, put this value and so on okay. Uh, but with again uh, it is tough with an enumerated data type because here we are using some kind of um, uh, you know symbolic uh, assignment and here it is a numerical value and though ultimately it will all be converted to standard logic vector and so on. Uh, it is difficult at least uh, to do the with select so in no harm because you are specifying both uh, the, the mutually exclusive condition. So uh, there will not be any priority and um, this will result in a simple logic. Then comes uh, the synchronous reset along with when you write the next state logic and output logic together. If it is alone next state logic alone there would not be problem when you combine you can make a mistake in the sense that you say if reset is 1 then you say next state is gets a because that is what you want and you forget all about the outputs 
do you say else and case present state is and you say when when h0 you write the outputs there could be 10 outputs and all the transition and so on okay but mind you um, there is as far as if is concerned there is one uh, choice here and the the uh, kind of mutually exclusive choice here underneath the case come there the output is specified and here it is not specified so you get an implied latch for the reset is equal to 1 it is dangerous so we have to say output is some value so don't care is one kind of because uh, this say when the reset is getting kind of asserted for that duration so you can even make it inactive you don't have to say don't care you can make it uh, the inactive value to be very uh, sure that during when reset is one you don't get any nasty uh, surprises but uh, it's improbable uh, so that is uh, one way of sorting this out another way of uh, sorting it out is that write the if just for this and you say end if okay and write write the case separate okay separate it out so if reset is one the next state is a end if because we are not combining it there is no else here so uh, like that you do uh, and do the case present state is as i said i don't prefer this because there is this looks as if there is no else kind of thing so it, it could be problematic so don't write like that you, better to write like this and uh, we also said normally if you don't specify anything like you just leave the code uh, like this and then the tools will assign a simple kind of encoding mostly sequential encoding like this will be 0, 1, 2 and 3 okay. And if you want to kind of for whatever reason and we are going to see uh, what uh, reasons you could uh, there could be to change this assignment but then if you want it uh, you can use uh, the kind of uh, predefined attributes um, of the uh, the VHDL uh, to control that that is called state encoding sequential gray 101 100 and uh, this I am showing what was supported in the uh, the integrated uh, you know system environment of the Xilinx ISE uh, or ICE okay. Uh, but I have seen that the attribute um, in, the, in the recent tool like the Vivado of the Xilinx uh, this attribute is changed. So please check uh, which tool you are using and refer to the, the vendor manual for the appropriate attribute. But more or less uh, the maybe some name changes but more or less uh, the syntax is uh, same. So here uh, the syntax is uh, saying attribute state encoding of whatever state uh, you have given the name for that enumerated data type. So type is gray or sequential 101, 100 and we will see what is 101 yesterday I said what is it and then you get what the, the, the encoding defined by this but if you want a very specific encoding you can use attribute enum encoding of state type then you can literally say what is the encoding okay. And if that is not possible you could instead of uh, you know you can forgo uh, the kind of enumerated data type and you can kind of hard code uh, the present state and next state into vectors standard logic vectors and you can define constants so that you can you do not need to change uh, like if there is a change in the in the state diagram then if you write numerical values in the, the VHDL code you have to go and change everywhere it is error prone. So you can declare define constants for each state with the proper state assignment whatever is assignment then uh, you can um, implement that code then if there is a change need to be done it need to be changed only in one place you can add more state you can change the state assignment you can remove the state and so on in one place okay. Definitely uh, the code also if you add and delete you need to change in the, the VHDL code uh, but minor changes in the, uh, the state assignment you do not need to change anything. And I, I also said about FSM editors there are uh, graphical tools uh, which allows you to draw the state diagram and which will create the equivalent 
uh, the, the code VHDL or Verilog um, there is no magic in it because it is one to one and um, it, it as you draw it as you put various elements it knows the moment you put a bubble it knows it is a state and a arrow it is a transition. So, that is kept track and ultimately uh, in some data structure and ultimately the, uh, the some template codes are generated is not very difficult as I said if you are um, I mean it can be done very easily only you need to be good in programming. So, that is what we have um, you know discussed in the last lecture. I have gone through uh, this so that again that gets into your mind properly. Now, we will continue with we have actually in the earlier lectures we have looked at certain issues with the finite state machine. You, if you remember we have looked at how to do the state diagram optimization ok. What is the basic idea? what are the equivalent state and which are redundant, how to detect that from the next state logic and output logic and so on. And we have also looked at the output races when there is a kind of multiple flip flop state change state at the same time owing to the, uh, the difference in propagation delay there could be transitory states and if these states produce output that could create problem in the circuit. So, how to handle that? and we have looked at the grey coding output registering and the, we mentioned about the VHDL coding for that. Then we looked at uh, the transition table if we choose uh, the various type of flip flops basically D type, T type and JK type of flip flops and um, we have kind of discussed uh, what are the maybe the advantage, disadvantage and so on. So, let us continue. Uh, with the state assignment ok. So, let us take that part today. So, remember that you have this state machine where the next state logic output logic is there and we have the state uh, sorry about this, this should come here this q. Um, uh, so, uh, we say the state machine is going through different states and when we design we say state A, state B, state C, state D. but uh, before proceeding with the next state table and output table we have to assign some numerical value to it ok. Now, we are going to see whether that affect the question is that how what is the effect of state assignment on the next state logic ok. Say uh, or output logic um, say the question is that if you do the assignment in a particular way can uh, the area required for implementation of this uh, can be minimal ok. Suppose there are uh, 20 ways of doing the state assignment uh, in at least in one of them or multiple of them the area is half of uh, the maximum ok. Then it is better to choose that particular state assignment ok. And that is natural because at least for the next state logic the next state is a function of the present state and the input. And this is a combination logic and we uh, so you, you imagine the next state table you have inputs, you have the present state, you have the next state. And we are trying to form equations of the, the various d2, d1, d0 in terms of the q2, q1, q0 and the inputs. So, uh, you and you know you can imagine uh, if you are familiar with the Karnoff map you go to Karnoff map you try to group the min terms. So, our question is that if you do the assignment in a particular way you can group it such that the redundancy can be removed and this become minimal. Similarly here because the output is a decode of the present state and the input and if you do the assignment in such a way uh, then whether this logic can be minimized or there is an assignment such that both can be minimized. There is a very great saving in area. So, if the area is reduced many many a times uh, the, the interconnecting wire length can be reduced, the delay will be less, the power dissipation will be less. So, in, in uh, the digital VLSI and FPG and all that uh, it is very wise to kind of uh, optimize the area or minimize the area that will result in lot of you know advantage with respect to the power 
uh, with respect to the timing and so on. So that is what we are going to look. So at this point it looks like say you work out all possible assignment and find out uh, the area which is minimal okay that is what we are going to look at it whether that is a possible thing. So that is the idea of the state assignment. So take this case the number of states are s okay. Suppose we have a say 5 states and then the number of flip flops for the binary encoding uh, is the logarithm of s to the base 2 and normally you take the ceiling because this could be a fraction say in the case of 5 uh, if you say log 2 it will be some 2 point uh, something uh, some decimal number. So we need to use uh, take the ceiling which is 3 then we will end up using 3 flip flops okay. So now the question come is that we are we are trying to kind of do all possible assignment that is the uh, that is what we have decided okay. Let us uh, do all possible assignment. So what are the number of possible weight ways to do the assignment say we have s states we have n flip flops okay. Let us assign a variable to it instead of putting this uh, in the expression log s to the base 2 is n the ceiling of it uh, that is n. So how many uh, possible ways you can do the state assignment in terms of n and s uh, first thing to uh, kind of decide is that whether in all these kind of counting problems you should be very clear whether it is a permutation or a combination. Um, so every time if you have confusion like for a uh, like if for those who are familiar it is one shot okay. If you struggle with it the best thing to take an example is take an example of suppose you have uh, say 4, four uh, states possible states like 0, 1, 2, 3 you have 2 sorry 4 possible states and like 2 flip flops 4, four possible state and 2 real states A0 and S1. So then you know that the, the first state A0 can get any of the 4 so there are 4 possibilities okay. And uh, if you assign 4 possibilities one of the 4 possibilities then when it comes to the next one you have only 3 choices okay. So it is a 4 into 3 so it is a permutation because uh, each assignment is unique it is not a combination like S0 getting 0 and S1 getting 1 is different from S0 getting 1 and S0 getting 0. So, uh, that alone should clarify the position. So basically uh, if you look at the number of possible ways to do the state assignment this permutation of 2 raised to n because for n flip flop there are 2 raised to n kind of possible states and s is the real number of states. So p 2 raised to n uh, comma s okay and uh, let us take an example there is a state machine with 17 states and not a, I am not, uh, it is a real life uh, case there could be state machine with 17 states. So uh, the n is 5 okay you will accuse me of choosing something close to the 16 but in real life can be it can be strange and let us uh, find out the possible ways of doing the state assignment uh, the permutation of 2 raised to n. So that is 2 raised to n is uh, 32, 2 raised to 5 is 32, uh, state is 17. So that is 32 factorial divided by 32 minus 17 factorial. So uh, you have some uh, like p n r then it is n factorial by n minus r factorial. So 32 factorial by 32 minus 17. So it is essentially 32 into 31 into all the way into 16 okay. And if you look at this number it is some 2.5 some decimal number into 10 raised to 44 it is a huge 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 possibilities you know this should that is why I put this you know. So uh, if you try to do all kinds of uh, all possible assignment and try to minimize area it is an intractable problem it is not going to be solved uh, in in a kind of deterministic uh, time period uh, it is a 
for the, the advantage we get the, the amount of computation we have to go through is tremendous. So, this is not possible like this is, this is mind boggling. So, this huge number. So, this should tell you that um, you should not try to attempt uh, such a thing ok. Of course, in a simple case maybe there are um, 4 possible state and 3 assignment you have to make it is possible, but then when the numbers are even it, it looks very very small you end up with this because of this kind of uh, you know uh, the exponential way it grows. Um, so, the question is that we cannot very systematically go and solve it, but our aim is that somehow minimize the next state by doing a state assignment ok. Uh, or by do by doing a state assignment minimize the output logic. So, uh, trying all possible um, kind of uh, assignment and finding out the minimal is not computationally viable solution. So, then in such cases when things you cannot go very kind of uh, um, uh, you know go through all the cases and find a, an optimal solution we try some kind of sensible uh, kind of rules uh, which is called heuristic that we know that if you this rule make a, some sense uh, that like if you from there is a basic principle which tells you that if you do this probably there is could be a reduction in, in uh, area and we do that. We may not get the absolute minimum, but we can be uh, uh, close to the minimum or we can do better than a random uh, kind of uh, assignment or a sequential assignment. So, we call that heuristic. So, so since we have the systematic method does not give you any solution let us try some heuristic. So, that is what we are going to do it and we will concentrate on the next state logic minimization. So, uh, the question is that where to look for insight ok we want to uh, come out with some sensible rule to apply for the next state logic optimization. Where do we look for uh, insight ok? Naturally uh, uh, the next state logic um, is specified in the next state table. So, that is where we should look ok. So, we should look in the next state table and now in the next state table you know it is composed of input present state sorry uh, present state and next state and next state is our for a d flip flop some d2, d1, d0. And if you remember your Karnoff map for d2 we form uh, min terms in terms of the input and the present state and then you put it in the Karnoff map and try to group them ok. You can group them only if they are adjacent ok. So, that is what that is that tells you some rule saying that uh, if you play with the logical adjacency of uh, the states that might give you an adva advantage in while grouping you know while grouping and applying basically applying the ad logical adjacency theorem. If you remember the adjacency theorem say that a b bar or a b is nothing but a into b or b bar which is nothing but a ok that that is what we do in logical adjacency and that is I am talking about one variable, but that can be applied to uh, any power of 2 like you can apply to 2 variables then uh, the 4 states are there uh, it can be possible assignment then it can be combined to remove the 2 literals in a min terms. So, that is what I mean. So, aim would be to look for the same next state since these state bits are output of next state logic and that is what we want to minimize. So, uh, uh, we would like like you look for the same next state you know we are um, in a next state table we have input present state and the next state. And we are trying to optimize um, uh, the implementation of the next state. So, look for uh, the same next state bits suppose you are looking at d2 look d2 wherever d2 is 1 you know or uh, the d2 d1 d uh, sorry uh, the, the, the q2 q1 q0 wherever there is next state you know kind of identical then uh, you can make things adjacent. And for this uh, we would like the min terms adjacent, min term is consisting of input condition 
and the present state ok. So, uh, the best bet will be that we are playing we have only choice in the state assignment present state. So, we are playing with symbolic state and we are assigning it input conditions we have no control ok. So, it will be, uh, be good to assume that if for the same next state if there are same input condition you make the present state logically adjacent. Then when you group it some literals will be thrown off from the, the min term. So, so, we let us look at the same next state with same input condition and make the present state adjacent such that while grouping bits are removed ok. That is the basic idea and this can be done in powers of 2 ok. So, that is what I am going to show. Uh, suppose you have two state and I have already run the assignment, but say this is S i, this is S j and it is transiting to the same S k 1 0 1. So, the rule is that for some two symbolic state for the same input condition they transit to the same next state. What you do is that you make these two states S i and S j logically adjacent ok. So, this is 0 1 0. 0 1 1 it is made adjacent then uh, then when you like you group it together in when you apply the adjacency theorem you see that everything else is same but this is differing. So, this get knocked off ok. So, uh, this can be extended to powers of 2 say you have a 1 0 1 here another 1 0 1 here all the input conditions are same and hopefully this is like you know 0 all 0 0 0 0 1 then you can combine all the 4 and q1 and q0 is removed from the equation of d2 and d uh, you know uh, d0 and all that you know that's the idea uh, um, of the the heuristics we can apply to the next state logic minimization so under the same input condition if the state si and s j transit to same next state sk make assignment such that the state si and s j are logically adjacent and this is applicable to more than two states ok. And uh, you can you can say that you know it is even if uh, you can catch on one bit um, it is like you say here you look that even if in one bit suppose this is you cannot get a solution across a bit even for this d2 alone if you make it adjacent uh, that is uh, useful because at least for that. Uh, there will be reduction in the next state logic for the d2 ok. That is what I have written here that state s i and s j may transit to different next states under different condition, but if both transit to just one next state uh, it is good enough to make them uh, ad, uh, you know adjacent ok. So, uh, like if you can s i and s j may transit to different kind of next state at different condition, but s k s l and all that, but even for one s k if you can make it adjacent it is useful. So, now you get like uh, the same heuristics can be applied to the output logic. So, we, we are almost uh, kind of you can straight away uh, tell the rule the heuristic that you have two present state say let us take the Moore kind of output then the outputs are same then you just make them adjacent like you have S i and S j produces uh, the same output make them logically adjacent. So, that when we group one thing get knocked off and similarly you have 4 states adjacent then you make uh, all the 4 logically adjacent saying that 1 1 1 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 1. So, that 2 literals get knocked off the min term and if it is a melee um, kind of output then you have to combine the inputs you have to make sure that uh, these, these are logically adjacent for the same kind of input condition that you have to keep in mind. So, that is what is stated here you know under the same input condition that is for melee type if it is not melee you can remove this. If state S i and S j produces same output make the state assignment such that the state S i and S j are logically adjacent ok. And it is applicable to more than 2 states by powers of 2 there is no point in making I mean you cannot make uh, 3 logically adjacent you have to make say after 2 uh, the, the, the thing you have to try is uh, the 4, 8 and so on. And state S i and S j may produce different output under different input condition, but if both produces even one output same 
is good enough to make them adjust, adjust and ask the equation for that output get minimized. What I am saying is that you may not get a chance suppose you do not get a chance to make kind of all uh, like a such a pattern for two states you can look at the subset uh, of these output to do that. Um, I do not know whether the tools uh, do it sometime in a simple state machine may not be worth to try that. I am not sure whether the, uh, the, the, the which synthesis tool try it may be uh, at least um, the may be the, uh, the some advanced synthesis tool like simplify pro um, may try it. I, I do not know about the recent uh, the Xilinx uh, XST synthesis tool or the synthesis tool of the Vivado. I have not tried it I will if I try it I will maybe uh, in the later lectures I will tell you. Uh, now let us uh, come to this kind of um, issue. So what we have discussed is the state assignment to reduce uh, the area and we have found that for you know to evaluate all possible um, scenarios uh, state assignment and come out with a minimal area is an intractable uh, problem we have seen the huge computation type required. So then we have come out with some heuristic which is based on some sensible kind of um, basics you know basics of minimization. So it should work okay only thing is that um, uh, to try and do the next state logic minimization and output logic minimization together may be contradicting like that you try out the heuristic for next state logic minimization and you come back and try to do again for output logic uh, both may not work together you know that is one problem with that heuristic if you are lucky it works together. So at least um, uh, you can try one thing if you find uh, the next state logic area is much much you know larger than the output logic area then you can try the heuristics for the next state logic than the output logic. But we are not sure whether we can do it together it could be contradicting, contradicting the heuristics could be contradicting um, it may not uh, reap uh, the benefits um, as you think. So let us come to the, uh, the next issue which is something to do with the fault tolerance of the state machine. So uh, this is about the unused state suppose we have the number of states as s okay. Then we know the number of flip flops is n which is log s to the base 2 the ceiling of that okay. So um, there could be unused state because uh, this the fact that you end up with a fraction and take ceiling uh, it says that there could be unused state okay like here. So the unused state the all possible assignments uh, uh, the states are 2 raised to n because n flip flops are there. So minus s is the unused state. So if uh, if you have states uh, number of states are 8 then n is, is a uh, not a fraction if you take just the log then n is 3. So in that case 2 raised to 3 minus 8 is 0 but if it is s is 5 so that is the case here n is 3 then the unused states are 2 raised to 3 minus 5 equal to 3 okay. So uh, the question is that what to do with that okay. Uh, see here I am showing an example of 5 states this uh, 5 states. So we have 3 unused states and assume that we have done a state assignment like a sequential state assignment a very simple state diagram and mind you this this could be like in most cases there could be simple state diagram like that only thing is that there could be kind of self loops here uh, that could be the only uh, difference from a practical state diagram. So let us I am not showing all the input transition but assume something like this and you have states going through 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 but 5 are not used say 5, 6, 7 is not used okay and assume that uh, we have not taken we have not specified this okay. We have kind of uh, told the tool uh, to treat it as kind of do not care or something like that and what happens 
the state machine is after all some three flip flops ok. Uh, and uh, suppose our uh, the circuit FPGA or the chip we are designing is in a noisy environment ok. It can be some kind of radiated EMI electromagnetic interference or conducted EMI you know that uh, the noise conduct through the supply lines through the ground and there was some noisy equipment uh, connected to the same power supply and uh, some noise gets picked up either radiated or conducted and this suppose this flip flop was in say assume that it is in uh, 0, 0, 001 ok. So, q2 is 0, q1 is 0, q0 0 is 1 suppose the q2 has flipped from 0 to 1 ok it was in this state and suddenly it is flipped uh, this q2 has flipped from 0 to 1 then uh, the state machine gets into this state 101 okay now that then what happens the question is what happens okay suppose we have not taken care we have not explicitly uh, taken care of that in the design what can happen okay so that what all can happen i mean that is what uh, the first thing let us forget about uh, all the technical uh, reasoning what all can happen you you, you just as a kind of a creative or what all possibilities are there like you can say yes it gets in there ok 101 and in the next clock it comes back here oh, fine then it is very good it has gone there and it has come back then it continues ok. Or you can say instead of coming back here it comes back here oh, that could be um, dangerous depending on the application because you are doing something very uh, sequentially here suddenly it skip these two steps and go there uh, it can be very dangerous depending on the application now uh, you can imagine uh, this is controlling suppose the seat machine is controlling uh, the the radiation of a patient and uh, uh, the this is uh, you know happen something initialization is happening this is the radiation state and with improper initialization it goes there what was 5 minutes is becoming 50 minutes then it's too dangerous you know. So, it depends on the application maybe uh, in a simple thing like a vending machine you ask for the uh, for a soft drink and a, a potato chips come out it may not matter uh, the good for the, the customer uh, little loss for the vendor but may not nothing life threatening happens but then it depends on the application. So, one possibility is that it can go there and get come back somewhere here and at least for us uh, probably it looks safe uh, than you know getting it stuck ok that that is another possibility you know you get it you uh, by noise it goes there and it stays there like again the clock comes but somehow uh, it stays there. Now, we will we will see what are the chances of it staying there but suppose it stays there then um, it is bad ok. So, uh, uh, if nothing happens it is ok but if something happens with the data path then it is dangerous ok. Another possibility is that it may loop through some or all of the unused state ok. Maybe uh, like after 10 it gets into 101 it comes 111 it comes to 101 and loop or loop through this you know whatever way ok. It cycle through some or all of the unused state. Now assume that this unused state produce some output ok some random output we had some say phi output arbitrarily it produces some output then it can be way extremely dangerous ok. So, that is the issue we are looking at it the fault tolerance if there are new state in the in the state diagram or state machine and if you have not designed properly and by noise or by some chance it gets into the a new state it can come back to arbitrary state in the, in the, the state diagram it can get stuck there it can loop through and if that states produce random output if you have not taken care then it can be extremely uh, dangerous. So, uh, that is what is stated here what happens if FSM get into the state could get stuck there it could loop through some or all of a new state it could get back to a valid or used state ok it get back to some some of the state in the state diagram 
and if that state produce some random output then uh, dangerous. So on what conditions above can happen okay. So we, we would like to look at uh, in which scenario uh, kind of it gets stuck there. I mean if you can understand that maybe it will at least it is better uh, uh, than you know thinking like you have such a problem um, and somehow bring it back to some uh, kind of reasonable state. But how like in what conditions it goes there and gets stuck on what condition it get could loop through some of the new state. Let us at least for an academic curiosity let us look at it from the basic principle okay. Now for that to happen so assume uh, that we have done the next set log logic coding here like this. You have process, presence, present state and various input i1, comma i2, comma like that and you say begin and you say k is present state is and you say when s0, s1 we have 5 states. So you go all the way to when s4 but there is s5 and s6 and s7 and we do not specify that say we say when others okay combining all s5, s6, s7 and all possible um, kind of states uh, for the simulation you know using the standard logic uh, other cases. Then you say next state is do not care. We are hoping that if you say do not care uh, the next state area is minimized you know because we are not explicitly specifying that means for these s4, s5, s6 you can treat the next state as 1 or 0 and uh, we are hoping that uh, some minimization happen with the proper assignment and the area get minimized. That is why we say next state is do not care and that also shows uh, the use of that particular do not care because when we discuss standard U logic and standard logic we said there is something called do not care and we have not seen uh, it being used but this is the way it is used and uh, we are hoping that it gets uh, reduced area. So let us look at one condition okay, one possible assignment the tool makes okay. So there uh, you see this is a valid state 0, 0, 0 then 0, 0, 1 and there are lot of entries up to um, this ellipsis continuity like 1, 0, 0 okay which is the, the kind of um, uh, S0 to S4 5 valid states and suppose this is an kind of uh, unused state which is 1, 0, 1 I am showing with a different color and we say the input condition is do not care okay we do not care and we said the next state is is also the do not care okay. Assume um, the synthesis tool for optimization purposes treated this as 1, this as 0, this as 1 okay. That means if such a thing happens by we have written the code like that and if this is the state uh, this is the kind of um, assignment the tool does for optimization. Then you see what happens by mistake uh, the present state become 101 and the next state decoded is 101 itself. From the current present state irrespective of the input the next state decoded is 101 itself. So the moment it gets in there the next clock it transit to the same 101 then it loops through that and we have not even talked about the output we do not know because if you in the output table if you write 101 and uh, say do not care then the same thing will happen. The tool will pick assign someone some zeros and all that and then it will produce some random output which can be extremely uh, dangerous to the application okay. So that is how uh, this getting stuck happens and now you can imagine how uh, the loop through can happen okay that is what is shown in the next slide. So we have the valid state 0 to 4 S0 to S4 and we write all the valid kind of uh, state diagram so everything happens. But here for S5, S6 and S7 we said it is all do not care okay that is what we have said. Now if the tool do, do this kind of assignment for whatever reason for optimization say 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1 and 1, 0, 1. Then what happens you see that if it gets into 1, 0, 1 
irrespective of the input condition the next state is 110. If it get into 110 then the next state is 111 and if it is 111 it is 101. So that is back here. So it loops 101, 110, 111, 101 okay. Now in this case I have shown all the three it can loop through the part of the, uh, the, the state suppose here it was 110 and, and the 110 comes here it is back to uh, kind of um, uh, like 101 become 110 and for 110 it is 101 then it loops through the two, two states okay. So this is quite dangerous and as I said we are not sure what outputs are produced by this then again the dawn case and all apply in the output logic table. So it is wise as far as the fault tolerance is concerned to bring it back okay. Now when you say bring it back um, um, we have to bring it back to some state some valid state okay definitely valid state. But uh, in this picture I am showing it to bring it back to the initial state okay. But we can only state that bring it back to a safe state okay. So that is something which you have to uh, keep in mind uh, we have to bring it back to some safe state and in most cases maybe the starting state is good enough. Suppose uh, you take an example of a multiplication then um, suppose something goes wrong halfway through the multiplication then it has gone to this unused state. Uh, nothing uh, nothing happens if the best thing is to bring it to the uh, ready for the next multiplication maybe this result is not corrupted but at least the next one happens properly. But that need not be true for all kind of cases like you have a, a state machine you know kind of controlling something complex and uh, which takes long time and uh, it has gone through halfway and you just bring it to the, the original state may not be a good idea. So maybe in the, in the next lecture we will see how to code for this and uh, discuss uh, kind of the scenario a little more bring little more clarity to it. So the last thing we have discussed is how to handle the unused state because if the state machine get into unused state depending on how you have coded it can get stuck there or loop through some unused state or it can come back to arbitrary state which could be which could be dangerous. So you should bring it back to some kind of safe state at least for the time being let us kind of uh, decide on that and then we will see maybe more uh, little more um, uh, detail about that with regard to some applications. And uh, we will continue in the next lecture with uh, uh, the other issues of the, the state machine we will try to complete that. So please go back revise try to grasp these concept from the basics like we I have shown some minimization if you are not kind of forgotten the minimization please go back and look at it. So the, though the basics are simple sometime knowing the simple thing connecting it uh, can kind of reap you, you will get a lot of benefit out of that than getting stuck with some kind of high level language and try to write some if then and case uh, with rhyme with no particular uh, grasp and understanding. So that is what I want to say. So I wish you all the best and thank you.